This is the Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer, and this is the bigger, much more expensive brother, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. Now I've had the A1 for a couple of months now, and the X1 Carbon for even longer. And despite the fact that the A1 costs about a third of the price, the print quality that you can get is actually pretty comparable. I've already done a full review of the X1C, so I'm gonna try to keep this review of the A1 a little bit shorter since they are pretty similar printers from a user experience and print quality standpoint. The build quality of the A1 is actually pretty solid for the price. It's an open frame design, so you're not getting an enclosure with this one, but everything is built very well. There's no flex to the frame at all, and it's got lots of features that help increase its reliability. For example, it's got an integrated nozzle wiper to make sure that no globs of filament are on the nozzle when it starts printing, along with this filament poop ejection system on the side. Anytime you change filaments or when it starts printing, it'll extrude just a little bit of filament onto this tray and it will shoot the filament out the side, effectively reducing the chance of a nozzle clog before printing. I printed this little bin here to catch all of it and it does fill up actually pretty quickly. One of the best things about bamboo printers is how easy they are to use and this one is no different. These things are truly set it and forget it until the print is done most of the time. The touchscreen that comes on the A1 isn't quite as nice as the one on the X1 Carbon, but everything is still laid out very intuitively, and it's very easy to change some of the controls manually while printing. The biggest complaint that I have from a user experience standpoint is actually the camera. While it is nice that there's one included, it is almost useless. When viewing the live feed from the app, I get like one frame per second of video, or sometimes even less. And the camera's shutter speed is so slow that it can't even keep up with the speed of the bed moving back and forth. The app is really great though. I can change settings, I can upload prints while I'm away, and even just browse the Maker World community from here. Now let's talk about print quality and reliability. Overall, the print quality is very, very good. I've printed a lot of things on this printer and generally I've been very, very happy with how they've come out. Here's a print of Minas Tirith from Lord of the Rings, for example, printed in PLA silk copper. I printed it at a layer height of, I think, 0.16, and everything but the spire at the top printed near perfectly. I think I needed to slow down the print speed just a little bit at the top to print that spire well. In that same copper PLA, I printed this wrist bracer. This was for a, a steampunk Halloween costume, actually. The small details at the top were printed on a resin printer and then painted, but like 90% of this was printed on the A1, and then sanded and actually burned with fire to give it like a worn and weathered look. In Iridium Gold Metallic, I printed this snaky dragon thing and the details on the scales came out really well. I've also printed a ton of handy stuff like this paint rack for my Citadel paints or this bottom plate for my Canon Autoboy film camera. I've also printed things that aren't necessarily handy but definitely look cool on a nightstand like my retro enclosure for my HomePod mini. This was printed in glow-in-the-dark PLA so it actually functions as a nightlight when I turn my lights off. This one printed great too overall but there is one issue that I noticed here that starts to become a little bit of a theme with this printer and that is layer shifting. Every now and again, I'll print something that comes out with either a very minor and barely noticeable layer shift like this one, or a major layer shift like this that just completely ruins the print. I did some digging and people online are suggesting that it may happen when a little bit of filament gets down inside the bed rails. And given how close the nozzle wiper is to the openings down there, I think that's a definite possibility. Now, thankfully it doesn't happen too often, maybe like one in every 20 prints, but it is annoying when it does. The other thing that's really annoying is that it doesn't know when prints fail. It'll just keep on printing if you don't stop it. That's something I really came to appreciate on the X1 Carbon since it has that micro LiDAR scanner and AI print failure detection to stop the print and tell you when it detects something has failed. The A1 kind of just chugs on when it fails and it tends to make a mess on the rare time that it does fail. On the upside, this printer, like the X1 Carbon, has the ability to print in up to four different filaments on the same print if you buy the optional AMS light. I have mine mounted to the wall instead of sitting on the desk so that it takes up less space. I printed this mushroom house using two different colors on the AMS light and it came out beautifully. Now be aware that this uses a lot of filament. So it's almost always better to print parts in different colors separately if possible to reduce wastage, but that's not possible on this mushroom cap where there's white dots inside the red mushroom cap. Overall, this is a great printer for the price. It has its flaws, but most of them can be overcome or worked around easily. And given the fact that this thing goes on sale for like 300 bucks, it's a very, very good deal. It's almost a no brainer. I use this printer for prototyping a lot, especially when the X1 Carbon is busy on another job. It's just a great little workhouse to have in my makerspace. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great day.